elders, thank you for granting me this audience. I've come to discuss a matter of great importance regarding my marriage to Akeke. Here we go again. The story of Namara and Okeke serves as a cautionary tale, highlighting the risks associated with disobedience towards parents, engaging in relationships at a young age, pressuring someone into marriage, experiencing early pregnancy, and parental abandonment. Yes, don't forget traditional rather than legal marriage, enduring infidelity, lacking self-esteem and self-worth, remaining in an unhappy marriage for the sake of children, assuming the role of provider for a man, and facing financial struggles. The challenges of cross-border trading compound Namara's exposure to various adversities. Namara continues to air her personal grievances in public. If she is unhappy with Okeke, she should have ended the relationship by now. Marriage carries significant risks, my friend. Besides deciding to worship the Lord, selecting your spouse is the most crucial decision you'll ever make. Your partner has the power to either uplift or destroy you. In Namara's situation, Okeke turned out to be a disastrous choice. He's possessed, he needs deliverance. Namara also requires liberation. How did she become involved with someone like Okeke? Why has she not departed from him yet? She should exercise caution, as she may be ensnared in the same soul ties that bind Okeke, who is rumored to have had relationships with countless women in Pallavi and Mano. Hopefully, she'll ultimately liberate herself from Okeke's grasp. I wonder where she'll find shelter once she departs from his residence. Only time will tell. Let's keep quiet, everyone is looking at us. Namara, what troubles you? You look distressed. I have discovered that Akeke has been unfaithful and has endangered my life by falsifying medical reports. Unfaithfulness and forgery. These are serious accusations. What evidence do you have? Akeke himself confessed to falsifying his medical reports, and he's threatened to manipulate any future test results of mine. I can't stay in this marriage any longer. But Namara, we believe in keeping families together. Divorce should be the last resort. You promised to support me if Akeke ever cheated. I need your help now more than ever. We understand, Namara. But without concrete evidence, it's difficult for us to intervene. I will find the evidence, and when I do, I'll return for your support. I also need your backing for sole custody of the children. We'll wait for your return, Namara. Your children's welfare is our priority. Thank you, my elders. I'll keep you informed of my progress. May the Lord guide you, Namara. We'll be here when you need us. Thank you, mother-in-law, for being by my side through all of this. Kasuja, my friend, housemate and partner in crime. I wonder who's knocking at the door this late at night. I hope it's not the police. Wamala, you easily get scared. Come in, the door is open. Wamela, Kasuja, I need your help. I'm really sick and I can't stay at home. I don't want Namara and my family to know that I am seriously ill. It is true that we reap what we sow. I'm scared, I desperately need your help. Sorry, Akeke, but we can't risk having you here. You might spread whatever you have to us. Yeah, you should go to the clinic and get checked out. I can't go to the clinic. They might reveal my illness and test results to Namara. That's not our problem. Okay, okay. You need medical attention. We can't help you, buddy. Sorry, you can't stay here with us. What if you die here? What will we tell your family? Since you don't want to go to the clinic, I know what we'll do. We'll leave you at a shrine. The native doctor will know what to do. Native doctor. Later, at the shrine. I can't believe they left me here. They brought me here in a wheelbarrow because I'm struggling to walk and they won't waste money hiring a cab for me. Abandoned and betrayed by my own friends. What brings you to my humble abode, son? I'm sick and alone. I'm suffering from a recurring STI and other chronic diseases. My friends dumped me here, hoping you can cure me. Lie down. Let me see what I can do. I never thought I'd end up like this, abandoned and helpless. We all have our moments of weakness, son. Rest now, and let me heal you with my ancient powers. Please help me to walk to the mud bed. 
A week later. I've done all I can, but his condition is not improving. We need to take him to the clinic before it's too late. But what if he dies here? We could get into trouble with the authorities. You're right. Let's ask the boys to take him to the clinic. Give them the wheelbarrow. They load Okek onto the wheelbarrow and head to the clinic. They leave him at the gate and flee. What seems to be the problem? This man is very ill. We've tried to treat him, but he's not getting any better. We'll run some tests. Please get hold of his family and ask them to fill out some forms. Sister Kawimulo is close friends with his wife. I'll ask her to convince Akeke's family to visit him at the clinic, fill in the forms, and pay for his treatment. That's fine. Run all of tests so long. He's unconscious. We hope he'll recover soon. Yes, doctor. A few days later. Nurse, the results are in. Mr. Akeke is seriously ill. We need to start treatment immediately. We are still trying to get hold of his family. Please try harder. His condition is worsening by the day but we can't commence treatment without consent from his next of kin, and we need the payment to be made prior to his treatment. Those are the rules. I don't agree with them but I must abide by them. Yes doctor, we need to obey the rules. Nothing is free anymore in this country. Meanwhile, at Namaro's home. Has anyone heard from OKK? He's been gone for days. He probably went out drinking with his friends again. Don't worry, he'll show up eventually. I'm getting worried about OKK. He's been gone for too long. He does this all the time. He'll come back when he's ready. Unaware of Okek's condition, they continue with their daily routines. Namara returns to Navastria. Hi Namara, how are you doing? Okek is in critical condition and we need funds for his treatment. What happened to Akeke? Let's chat over video. He's very ill, and we need your assistance to proceed with his treatment. Thank you for letting me know. Please send me his medical reports. Yes, right away. He's in a critical condition. After receiving the reports. Oh my, I had no idea his condition was this serious. And he brought most of these infections upon himself due to his reckless lifestyle. Our suspicions were correct. I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Is there anything else I can do to help? There's a 99.9% .9 chance that he transmitted. Don't say anything negative, Namara. Just get tested. Upon arrival here, I went to several hospitals in Vallejo City but they were all full with long winding queues. I will try again soon. Keep trying, Namara. Delay may prove to be futile. Maybe you can look for a hospital in the smaller towns of Novastria. Thank you, Nurse Kawumulo. Please contact Akeke's parents or siblings for financial assistance. I am sure they'll sell some cattle or make another plan to enable them to pay for Akeke's treatment. Unfortunately, they're unable to help. They suggested I reach out to you. I can't promise anything but I'll... I'll see what I can do. Thank you. Thank you. Speed is of the essence because his condition is getting worse by the day. I can't believe I'm considering this. But no, I have to focus on my own well-being and the children's. With resolve, Namara decides to prioritize her own health and plans to distance herself and her children from Okek's harmful influence. Namara rushes into the Vallejo City Hospital, visibly anxious. Excuse me, I need to get tested for, um, something urgent. I'm sorry, ma'am, but there's a long waiting list for non-emergency cases. You'll need to book an appointment. But this is important. It's... It's about my health. I understand, but I can't make an exception. Please book an appointment and come back. Namara reluctantly books an appointment and leaves the hospital, feeling frustrated and worried. I can't wait that long. What if it's something serious? I need to know now. Namara, my dear, you seem troubled. Is everything all right? I, I don't even know where to begin, Nalongo. It's Akeke, he's put me through so much. Namara confides in Nalongo, pouring out her heart about the hardships she's endured in her marriage. Oh, my goodness, I had no idea. But remember, forgiveness is key. Ask yourself, what would the Lord Jesus do in this situation? 
forgiveness. After everything he's done to me, he's lying in a hospital bed, possibly dying because of his own actions. I understand your pain, but holding on to anger and hatred will only hurt you in the end. Let go of the burden and forgive. But he may have given me diseases, Nalongo. How can I forgive that? It's not easy, but forgiveness is for your own healing. Pray for guidance, and let God handle the rest. Namari reflects on Nalongo's words, grappling with the idea of forgiveness in the face of betrayal and pain. A few days later after church. Remember, Namara, forgiving doesn't mean forgetting or allowing yourself to be hurt again. It's about releasing the burden from your heart and trusting in God's plan. I understand, Nalongo. It's just, it's hard to forgive someone who has caused so much pain. I know, my dear. But you've shown incredible strength by helping him in his time of need. Yes. I sent the funds to the hospital. It was tough, but I believe God will provide for me when the time is right. Exactly. We may not always understand God's ways, but we must trust in his wisdom and obey his commands. His plans for us are always greater than we can imagine. Namari reflects on Nalungo's words, finding solace in the belief that she has done the right thing, despite the challenges she faced. Namara receives the diagnosis from the doctors at Vallejo in Navistria. I'm sorry to inform you, Namara, but the tests have confirmed that you're suffering from an advanced stage of an STI. Oh no. How serious is it? It's quite severe, but with proper medication, rest, and a healthy diet, you can recover. Thank you, doctor. Nalongo, I can't stay here any longer. I think I need to return to the kingdom of Mano to rest, recover, and to move out of Akeke's house with my kids. I am done with him. As soon as I have recovered, I will leave that house. God will direct my paths. Don't go there to fight him. Let him know what he has done to you and leave everything for God. Also, don't fall for his charms ever again. See where falling for Akeke got you. Lastly, I strongly advise that you start afresh elsewhere. Leave everything behind, take your children and spend time in prayer, fasting, praise and worship. Ask the Lord to deliver you and bring your life into alignment with his original plans and purpose for you. Yes Nalongo, I need to completely break free from Akeke and everything related to him. Don't worry, Namara. I'll arrange for someone to accompany you back home to Mano. You need your family to take care of you. Namara expresses her gratitude as preparations are made for her journey back home, where she hopes to find comfort and support during her recovery. Thank you for watching this episode of Namara. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, we invite you to do so. Subscribing ensures that you'll be notified whenever we release new content. Also, we'd appreciate it if you'd like and share our content. Thank you for your support. Before we conclude, we would like to share the following verses with you. Kindly note that the verses were taken from the King James Version of the Holy Bible. Ephesians 4.32 says, And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Matthew 6 14-15 says, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Colossians 3.13 says, Forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Philippians 4.19 says, but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Psalm 37, 25 says, I have been young, and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Proverbs 3, 5 to 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. James 1.12 says, Blessed is the man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life, which the Lord hath promised to them that love him. Psalm 23.4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. 
thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And 2 Corinthians 12, 9 to 10 says, And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly therefore will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then am I strong. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you with humble hearts, seeking your guidance and strength in the midst of trials and challenges. We acknowledge that forgiveness is a cornerstone of our faith, and we ask for your help in extending forgiveness to those who have wronged us, just as you have forgiven us. Grant us the wisdom to trust in your provision and to lean on your promises, knowing that you will fight for us and provide for our needs. Help us to persevere in the face of adversity, knowing that you are with us every step of the way. Give us the strength to endure, the courage to stand firm, and the faith to believe that you are working all things together for our good. May your peace, which surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And may we always remember to turn to you in prayer, knowing that you are a loving and merciful God who hears and answers our cries. In Jesus' name we pray, Amen. Thank you for watching. Remain blessed.